Welcome to CLMD Connect. In support to the Comprehensive Region-Led Learning Continuity Plan LCP. I teach. Integrating Technology Academic Community. The Household. Ensuring every learner is safe and protected anytime, anywhere. Anchored on Sulung Edokalidad. This is Dep Ed Regional Office 11, delivering quality education across Davao region. As we continually support Dep Ed Sulo Ido Kalidad, we implore the commitment of our local and international partners, most especially our teachers from all grade levels, to contribute their concrete support and collaboration. It is because teachers are the most important workforce to respond to the need of quality education for our learners. Good morning, our dear English teacher participants. Today is our third day, and again, we request your active participation as we discuss and learn new sessions and meet new facilitators. Good morning to you, Ms. Abba. Good morning, Miss March. Absolutely right to you, this one. Through the literacy that one is empowered to connect and is her community and envisions his or her worth and commit imperishable development of our society. Welcome in our breakaway sessions on the third day, 29th of July, 2020. This is our regional training on literacy instruction. This is Maureen Ava Biacunia of the Santa Ana National High School Division of Davao City. Respected Regional Director, Region 11, Dr. Evelyn Arfet Alvero, CESO 4, Dr. Maria Inesi Asuncion, CESO 5, our Assistant Regional Director, the Chief of the Curriculum and Learning Management Division, Chief Janet G. Veloso, Education Program Supervisor, Dr. Manuel P. Vallejo, Dr. Marisol Langahid, ALS Education Program Supervisor, Dr. Jessalyn De La Cuesta, Education Program Supervisor Region 11. The Region 11 Education Program Supervisors, the Division Education Program Supervisors, our dearest teachers and our school heads, good morning, everyone. And of course, this time, we have to constantly remind our dear teachers and our participants to please do not forget to signify your attendance on the attendance link flash on the screen right now. Please do not forget that one because that is really one important for you to get your certificate of participation. And of course, we'd like also to thank our, our of course, representative from the Island Garden City of Samal, Ms. Lira as Robio, a master teacher of the San Agustin Elementary School. Thank you so much. Back to you, Ms. Marge. Yes, and we would like to remind our teacher participants to please write your complete name as you register your, uh, as you register in the attendance link. Write your complete name, surname, first name, and middle initials, and be consistent with your email address because we will send your certificate through your email address. And Ms. Ava, I would like to say that the evaluation link for yesterday's session is already closed. So we will post another evaluation link later this afternoon and we will request our teacher uh, view or viewers to answer after the last session this afternoon. Okay. And Ms. Ava, let us we also show the tablet link. Yes, because exactly perfect. Just like yesterday, we will cater another set of questions from our viewers. And please do send in your questions through the tablet link shown below. Okay, so this is the public link. Flash on the screen right now. Do not forget that one. And of course, Miss Marge, our day on the third day becomes so practically invigorating because there are a lot of speakers that we have from the 11 divisions of the Region 11. So would you like to have the pleasure to introduce our first speaker? Please take it away, Miss Marge. Yes, before I introduce our first uh, speaker for, for the breakaway session this morning. I would like to once again thank our speaker earlier, 
Dr. Marisal S. Langahid, our regional education education program supervisor for alternative learning system. Thank you so much, Marisol, and congratulations. Now, as a job start of our breakaway session, let us focus our attention to our first session, hunting for the nitty-gritty, noting significant details and textual evidences through close reading. May I now request the presence of the Davao City Division Reading Coordinator, Dr. Narmila Espedido. Take it away, ma'am. Welcome to CLMD Connect, in support to the Comprehensive Region-Led Learning Continuity Plan LCP. I teach Integrating, integrating Technology, technology academic, academic Community, community, community the, household, the Household, ensuring every ensuring learner is every safe learner and protected safe anytime, and protected anywhere, anywhere, anywhere. Anchored on Sulang Edo Kalida. This is Dep Ed is Regional Dep Ed Office Regional 11, Office delivering, 11 quality delivering quality education across the Davao region. Across Davao region. Good morning, everyone. I am Narmela P.S. Pidido, PSBS of Davao City Division. Today's session is on session eight, hunting for the nitty gritty, noting significant details and textual evidences. We have the following objectives for this session. At the end of the session, teachers should be able to recognize the nature principles and process of noting significant details. Describe and analyze the types of details in texts and identify and utilize comprehension strategies for noting significant details. We have key understandings for this session. Reading is a highly strategic process, constantly constructing meaning or ideas using a variety of strategies. Consequently, teaching comprehension strategies should focus on thinking, problem solving, and monitoring understanding by Harvey and Goodvis, 2000. Another is, a detail is a part of a whole. It may also refer to small elements that collectively constitute a work. Details in a text may be significant because they contribute to the wholeness of the material. Others considered insignificant may be there, but removing them may not affect significantly the integrity of the text. Explicit details are stated clearly and in details, leaving no room for confusion or doubt. Implicit details are implied or not directly stated. They are details that we cannot see. They may be vague or under the surface. Most often, they require the readers to make inferences. Being able to note significant details from the text, whether visual or verbal, leads one to understand the text more clearly and deeply. One is able to practice making inferences and conclusions, skills that are crucial in more complex reading tasks. Explicit teaching is at the core of good literacy instruction. Readers need direct, explicit instruction on how to use and apply comprehension strategies. Learners should be trained to engage in close reading of text and to use strategies that help them comprehend the reading texts more clearly. Close reading represents one type of reading in which students have a goal at a text, becoming the primary investigator, investigators of its meaning by Lap et al. 2013. Steps in close reading. First read, key ideas and details second read craft and structure third read integration of knowledge and ideas text dependent questions or the, the tdqs are those that can be answered only by referring back to the text being read learners today 
are required to read closely to determine explicitly what the text says and then make logical inferences from it. They must be also be taught how to construct te text-dependent responses or the TDRs to guide them how to refer back to the text. This session will lead us to understand the nature and principles of noting significant details and how this comprehension skill can be effectively taught explicitly to our learners. Before Sir Denmark P. Alayon will deliver this session for this topic, let us first have these previewing questions which will be answered later. Number one, what is a significant detail? Number two, what is noting significant details? Number three, what does research say about effective literacy instruction? Number four, what is close reading? And number five, what are the strategies for noting details? Ladies and gentlemen, hunting for the nitty gritty, noting significant details and textual evidences to be presented to us by Denmark P. Alayon, Senior Education Program Specialist, Teaching and Learning Division, Bureau of Learning Delivery. So my assigned topic is all about hunting for the nitty-gritty, noting significant details and, and textual evidences. Of course, this is an important reading comprehension skill. If our students have a gap in this particular reading comprehension, comprehension skill, what do you think will happen in the literacy, in literacy rate of our nation? Definitely, it will be greatly affected because this is really a crucial skill wherein all other reading comprehension skills are anchored into it, okay? Now, what are the things that are... What are the things that you will learn today? So it's wilt. In this session, what you will learn today are the following. First, recognize the nature, principles, and process of noting significant details. Second, describe and analyze the types of details in text. Third, identify and utilize comprehension strategies for noting significant details. So in this session, you're not only going to learn the nature, the attributes, and the process of noting significant details, but also the different strategies that you as teachers should utilize when you are, um, when you are teaching noting significant details to your students, all right? Is noting significant details really an essential skill for our students to master and learn? Why do you think so? If the responses to the questions are not appropriate to the questions that you ask, what is the implication of that? There might be a literacy gap. There might be a comprehension gap. Okay? And that is actually because the students have not yet mastered the skill of noting significant details. That is why, my dear educators, one of the many challenges that we face in the classroom is how to create active readers and writers who will be literate and critical adults. Our students won't be able to become literate and critical adults if we ourselves as teachers, we do not know how to note significant details. So for us to be able to transfer that skill to our students, we have to equip ourselves first. The question is, do our teachers know how to really note significant details? Because skills such as noting significant details is a process. Okay? It's a process. It's a step-by-step -step process that should also be mastered by our teachers. So for us to be able to develop this literate and critical adults among our students, let us equip ourselves first. Let us first get to know the different reading comprehension skills, one of which is noting significant details. We should also bear in mind that reading is a highly strategic process, constantly constructing meaning or ideas using a variety of strategies. It's not just asking the student to read a text, 
give them questions afterwards, and then sit okay, in front of the class doing nothing as the teacher. Okay? Some teachers are really doing that. Okay, class, read the story on page 59 and answer the questions that follow. After which, afterwards, we will discuss the story. That is the usual scenario in the classroom, right? But guiding the students on how to search for meaning, how to interact with the text, that is something missing. That is something that is not really done in the classroom. Okay? During reading is actually a systematic process wherein teachers should guide the students to look for meaning, to search for meaning, and to look for the details in the text to aid comprehension. Consequently, teaching comprehension strategies should focus on thinking, problem solving, and monitoring understanding. Our students should also be taught how to monitor their understanding. If there is a comprehension gap, if there is something that they don't understand, do they stop reading? That's the usual thing that our students do. If they don't understand something, they will stop reading. Reading is a burdensome activity for them because there are things that they don't understand. And why is it that our students are behaving like that? Because they are deficient in the skill. They do not know how to go about in the text. They do not know how to interact with the text because they are deficient in the skill. And that is one of the reasons why we have literacy gaps. Okay? So our role as, as teachers is very crucial because we really need to model the skills and to really guide our students to develop these skills before we allow them to do the skills on their own independently. Now, in terms of noting significant details, what do we mean by significant details? These are the questions that we need to ponder. And what makes them significant? Can we remove them and still maintain the integrity of the text? Imagine yourself telling a story to your friend or to someone without details. Do you think you would be able to understand each other? Right? Telling a story like, si ano, kinuha yung ano. Pumunta sa ganito, kinuha yung ano ni ano. Alright? A story without details. A story without essential details. Do you think there will be understanding between the two persons? Definitely, there is none. That's why, Details are very important because they are part and parcel of a text. And as readers, we need to look for these details because these details will also be able to make us understand the text, okay, and comprehend the text further, okay? Is it important to learn how to note details? Why? How should we note details? That's really the question. How should we note details? Do we just take down notes? Do we just get the elements from the story? Get the details from an informational text? So there has to be a process. Okay, There has to be a process. And we need to teach this process to our students. Okay, So what is a significant detail? A detail, as I have said, is a part of a whole. It may also refer to small elements that collectively constitute a work. So details in a text may be significant because they contribute to the wholeness of the material. But other details can also be considered insignificant, meaning removing them may not really affect significantly the integrity of the text. So these significant details should not be removed. Okay? Removing them will make the text boring. Okay? Will make the text empty. Okay. These significant details such as elements okay, for literary text and information, main idea and topic sentence or topic sentence and supporting details should not be removed in an informational text. They are really significant. Therefore, details in a reading text are small pieces of information that may support an interpretation, a conclusion or a claim, an inference and or main idea. So these are small bits of information that make up the text as a whole. Now, learners should know how to distinguish the different types of details. And we have two. First, explicit details. So what is, what is this explicit detail? 
So explicit details are stated clearly and in details, leaving no room for confusion or doubt. These are the kinds of details whose, um, who can be, uh, which can be gathered or picked out from the story right away or from the text right away. So the first set of questions provided to you are actually examples of explicit details. But do you know that there, are, there is also another type of detail which we as readers are sometimes not familiar with? And sometimes we ignore this kind of details. And that is implicit details. These are implied or not directly stated. They are details that we cannot see. They may be vague or under the surface. And most often, they require us readers to make inferences. Okay, so we need to analyze first the, the, the text, okay, for us to be able to infer, okay, so that's for implicit details. Now, let's see, now, what are the different types of details according to Rizakis in 1981? So, the details can be examples, facts, statistics, or numbers, reasons, definitions, and descriptions. These are the things that we need to look, look for, to watch for when we are looking at the details in the text, be it literary or informational. Okay? Now, what is noting significant details as a reading comprehension skill? So, noting significant details as a reading comprehension skill involves picking out, okay, from a text the particular piece or pieces of information or details to achieve a given purpose. Okay? So picking out, identifying the details, noting down the text to achieve a particular purpose. So the purpose can be to answer specific questions, okay, to determine the purpose of the author for writing the text, okay, to infer and to predict, okay. So noting significant details is actually the mother of all reading comprehension skills. Do you agree? Do you agree that the noting significant details is the mother of all reading comprehension skills? It's actually the heart of reading comprehension. Why? Our students won't be able to predict outcomes. They won't be able to distinguish facts from opinions. They won't be able to determine cost-effect relationship. They won't be able to draw conclusions and make generalizations, okay, if they do not know how to, how to note significant details. So it's actually a prerequisite skill to learn the different subsequent reading comprehension skills, okay? So if our students do not master, do not know, do not understand, and do not know how to do sig noting significant details, precisely, they won't be able to do other skills because other reading comprehension skills involve noting significant details. Do you agree? All right. And these details are the ones that good readers notice and authors use to emphasize the elements of the literary text or key information of the informational text. Now, let's have a review. What is text all about? Text is any communication, spoken, written, or visual, involving language. Okay? In this view, therefore, is a story being told orally considered a text? Do you consider a story being told orally a text? Yes or no? Yes. Is a song heard over the radio a text? Is a storybook a text? Is a movie a text? Is the video that you watch a text? Okay. Is a mathematical explanation a text? Yes. Is a graph or diagram a text? Is a TV commercial a text? Is a literary text a text? Yes, of course. And informational text. Yes. So precisely, we have two basic types of text in teaching reading. We have literary text and informational text. For literary text, if we want our students to note significant details, we have to focus also on the different elements. The story map here, okay, that is shown on the slide, is actually a helpful graphic organizer for the students to be able to pick out essential information from the literary text. So you have there the characters, the setting, the problem, and of course the plot, resolution, okay, the unfolding or the solution to the problem in the story, and the thoughts or reflections okay, of the students 
in relation to the story. So we can ask our students to note significant details using a story map. Okay? Being able to note significant details from the text, whether visual or verbal, leads one to understand the text more clearly and deeply. When we, when we guide our students to note the details from the text, definitely they will be able to understand what they are reading. Okay? One is able to practice making inferences and conclusions. These are skills that are crucial in more complex reading tasks. Okay? Now, where do we do noting significant details? In a BDA lesson structure, usually it happens during reading. So as I have said, in during reading activity, we should not just ask our students to open their books, read the story on this page, and answer the questions that follow. Because during reading, it's all about guiding our students for an active search for meaning. We have to guide our students to better understand what they are reading, to make sense of what they are reading, and to comprehend what they are reading. After all, we reading comprehension is what a very important skill that our students should also master okay and there are specific reading comprehension skills also so what strategies then can teachers adapt so students can engage with text what teaching strategies can be adapted to focus on comprehension so teachers help students explain and describe their responses to text by first modeling okay so si teacher nagmamodel muna their own response, and then ensuring that students have frequent opportunities to communicate their thoughts and feelings through discussion, art, drama, and written visual form. The unique response of each student provides a window into the student's reading process as well as his or her comprehension and thinking process. The multiple meanings, responses, and interpretations that students give to a text teach classroom literacy and allow students to acquire new insights ideas and perspectives that add to their own comprehension. Now, what are these comprehension strategies that strategic readers need? Of course, they need to be thought how to predict, okay? They need to be thought how to ask questions, okay? It's not always, the, it's not always essential that teachers should be asking questions, okay, in processing the text. The teachers should also guide the students to formulate questions on their own. Okay? And of course, they should also be taught how to clarify information. If there are things, if there are ideas that are not clear to them, they have to what? be guided to clarify information. They can also ask questions and clarify information that, um, that is considered a barrier to their comprehension. And of course, we have summarizing. Our students should be taught how to summarize information. And in that way, teachers can detect if the students really understand the chunks of messages that they are reading. What research says about text comprehension? So text comprehension can be improved by instruction that helps readers use specific comprehension strategies. If we really want our students to understand what they are reading, to make meaning and to make sense of the text, we have to use, we have to teach specific comprehension strategies. Okay? Do not just allow your students to read the text on their own without teaching them comprehension strategies that will enable them to make sense and to process the text that they are reading. Okay? Now, what does research say about effective literacy instruction? We just have to bear in mind the instructional design, which is explicit teaching. So in teaching literacy to our students, we need to model first the skill, the strategy, guide our students, okay, for them to be able to gradually master that skill or strategy until such time that, they, that we allow them to do the skill, to demonstrate the skill that they have learned or the strategy that they have learned on their own independently. So there has to be modeling and there has to be instructional scaffolding. Parang pag nagtuturo lang po yan, no, ng driving or swimming, di ba yung trainer, hindi niya agad hinahayaan mag-drive or mag-swim yung kanyang trainee. Okay? Kasi pag nangyari,
So explicit teaching is at the, is at the core of literacy instruction, effective literacy instruction. What you regards effective reading instruction? In effective literacy instruction, the teacher provides scaffolded support to help each student grow beyond his or her current level of achievement while gradually releasing responsibility to the student to help foster independent learning. Vygotsky, Vygotsky's theory of learning describes each student's current level of achievement as the zone of actual development where the student can apply his or her knowledge and skills independently. Teachers should model and scaffold learning that is just beyond this zone in what Vygotsky calls the zone of proximal development to stretch each student towards a new or next level of actual development. So what should teachers do? The teachers should begin the class by demonstrating first through modeling and or thinking aloud effective strategies for reading, writing, talking, listening, and thinking, and then move to coaching or guiding. So ito na yung guided practice. And eventually arrive at a point where the student practices the skill or strategy independently. That's for independent practice. So ang, ano natin dito, we have to bear in mind that we should not allow our, our students to do the task, the skill or the strategy independently if we have not yet um, underwent the modeling and the guided practice part. Kasi baka nag-independent practice na tayo, hindi mo pa model at hindi mo pa nagagawa with your students yung guided practice. So a framework for teaching close reading to adolescent learners, crucial to noting significant details, is the process of close reading. Ano ba tong close reading na to? Readers need direct, explicit instruction on how to use and apply comprehension strategies. Learners should be trained to engage in close reading of text and to use strategies that help them comprehend the reading text more clearly. Teachers are expected to model and provide guided practice and feedback as well as independent use of comprehension strategies. Okay, there has to be also sustained elaborate discussions about the text. For them to be able to explore multiple perspectives and concepts about the text that will support critical reflection and inter interpretation. There has to be also the use of diverse challenging content rich text that are meaningful for the students, okay? The text should be something that our students can relate with, okay? It has to be contextualized. It has to be localized. It's, it has to be something that they can relate with, okay? It has to be something that the experiences that it presents should be something that is relevant for them to make it meaningful for them, okay? Okay? Research indicates that teaching explicit comprehension strategies before, during, and after reading improves student engagement and understanding of text. So also, for effective comprehension strategy, teachers should do think aloud, okay? talking through about the text. So the teacher should also model the thinking process okay? that he or she is doing while processing the text. Okay? Like uh, using the I pronoun, okay? The I pronoun in processing the text. I think the main character here is Pip. I think she really wants to pursue her dream because she is pers persistent and she really wanted to become an assistant to people with vision loss. Yung, yung paggamit ng I pronoun, okay? Processing and modeling, okay? The thinking process as okay, as reading the text, okay, as processing of the text. Also crucial to noting significant details is the use of different fix-up strategies. When our students do not understand something, do they have to stop reading the text? No. So there has to be fix-up strategies. They have to be equipped with these fix-up strategies, okay? This is when comprehension breaks down, their comprehension breaks down, they don't understand something, but they are able to solve their problem. They are able to solve their comprehension gap because they are equipped with different strategies, fix-up strategies. And the fix-up strategies could be rereading the text. If they don't understand what they are reading, they can reread the text. Okay, They can activate their prior knowledge and relate it to the text. They can make use of context clues. They can infer meaning, think aloud summarize the story, visualize what is going on in the, in the text or story. They can locate keywords, make predictions, use word attack strategies. They can make use of graphic organize to organize the information or the details from the text. And they can also do self-assessment, okay, evaluate their understanding. 
what did I learn? What is this story all about? So they can ask themselves, okay? So why do we need, why do our students or why do our readers need to self-monitor? In order for them to keep meaning and clarify understanding as they read. And the strategy that they can use is a study guide, okay? So a study guide is a written guide in the form of activity sheets or worksheets that can be given to students to guide them as they read assignments on their own. So as you can see, there are questions in the first column. The students just need to respond to the questions, but they have to refer back to the text. They have to look at the details from the text for them to be able to respond to the questions in the study guides. Okay, so we have questions like what's happening in the story? What's happening with, with the main character? Is the main character changing? What do I think will happen next? What is the problem? So these questions will make the students go back to the text interact that with the text and engage with the text further and locate information needed for them to be able to answer okay, the questions. Another example of study guide is this, wherein the students will have to look for the interesting part, powerful part, funny, puzzling, or important part or details from the text. Okay, So they need to locate they need to find out the page number and the paragraph number and the reason for their choice okay and of course there are processing questions at the end okay so that's also an example of study guide okay close reading yeah close reading po talaga tayo kapag noting significant details okay when we want our students to deal with complex text okay we have to do close reading okay and what is this close reading all about it's one type of reading in which students have a go at a text becoming the primary investigators of its meaning. So in other words, in Tagalog, ito ay paghihimay-himay ng detalye sa teksto. Okay? Paghihimay-himay. Okay? Looking at specific details. Hunting for the nitty-gritty. Okay? For the details in the text. That will aid comprehension. Okay? So a close reader works like a detective. He or she has to reflect. He or she has to focus on the author's purpose, what the author says, how the text flows, what the words mean, what the structure of the text tells them. Okay, read and reread again the text and use the text evidence to support their thinking. So what are the attributes of this close reading? There has to be short passages and excerpts, but if the text is too long, the text can be chunked into different segments meaningful segments. Diving right into the text with limited prayer reading activities, focus on the text itself, rereading deliberately, reading with a pencil, or if there is no pencil, the reader can also make use of highlighter. Noticing things that are confusing, discussing the text with others, think, pair, share, or turn and talk frequently, and small groups and whole class, and of course, responding to text-dependent questions. So there are different steps in close reading. We have three steps. First read, second read, and third read. In first read, we have key ideas and details. Second read, craft and structure. And third read is integra integration of knowledge and ideas. Okay? So for first read, it's the first reading of the text, right? So the focus is looking at the key ideas, looking at the main idea, looking at the specific details in the text, making sure that readers know the main idea, story elements, or key details that the author includes. So what we did a while ago is just the first three because we look at specific details in the story or in the video. So that's the first read. But there is actually the second read. And what's the focus? The focus is the choices, the vocabulary choices of the author. Okay, what can you say about the vocabulary choices of the author? Is there local color embedded in the story? What can you say about the text structure? When you say text structure, how is the text organized? What is the organizational pattern of the text? Is it about enumeration, description? Is it about time sequence? Does it reflect cause and effect relationship? Is it about problem solution? Is it about comparison and contrast? So our students should also be guided on how to analyze this text structure. And of course, different text features. Is there a, a surprise ending? Okay. Is there a use of local color? 
and so on and so forth. Okay, so that's craft and structure. And the third read is integration of knowledge and ideas. The focus is to synthesize and analyze information from several texts or media. The learners may record the, their ideas on sticky notes, graphic organizer, or a thinking sheet. So this includes analyzing the story or the text and relating with other similar, similar texts in different formats. Okay? Like, how is the story peep related to another story? Okay? So that's integration of knowledge and ideas. Okay? Essentials in close reading is what I told you a while ago, the think aloud. This is reading the text to your students and modeling your thinking as you answer a text-dependent question. Like, who is the main character in the story? Okay, class, I think the main character in the story is Pip. She is a yellow dog with a small height, and she really wanted to pursue her dream. Okay, so it's modeling your thinking process to your students so that they will also think, they will also process the text the way you do. Okay, so that's modeling. Requires students to dig deeply into the text to answer them. So this TDQ or text-dependent question cannot be answered without using the text. Okay, background knowledge and prior experiences should not be included or considered when asking a TDQ. So what are the different text-dependent questions that we can ask our students in relation to the text that we ask them to read? Are this, what is the evidence? What do you think blank means? Can you explain your thinking? What did you learn from the illustrations? What do we know from the title or cover? What is the author trying to tell us? Do the context clues help us identify the word's meaning? Can you show me where that is found in the text? Okay. Now, specifically, we, are, we have different text-dependent questions for each step or phase of the close reading. So for first read, when we look at the key ideas and details, these are the questions that teachers can make use of. All they need to know is to modify for, for these questions to become appropriate to the text that, we, that they want their students to read. Okay? So for key ideas and detail, we have your questions like, what are the key ideas? Recall the story. What is the story or article beginning to be about? What is the theme of the story? Identify characters, setting major events, so on and so forth. So if you're going to look at the questions, at the text-dependent questions under key ideas and details, the focus is to look at the elements, look at the essential details or key details of the text. So that's for the first read. Now, what kind of questions should be asked when the focus is on the craft and structure? Okay. So questions like, what does the word or phrase from the story, figurative language or sensory word mean? Okay. What text structure did the author use in the text? From what point of view is the story told? Distinguish between information provided by the pictures and words in the text. So these are questions no, that we can ask our students if we want them to look at the text structure, choices of words, and text features. So that's the second read. For the third read, we have integration of knowledge and ideas. These are the examples of text-dependent questions. Okay, so we have... How is blank in paragraphs 1 and 2 like the same idea in paragraphs 3 to, through, six, uh, through 6? How is blank shown in paragraphs 7 to 11? Compare the video to a movie, web page, video game, piece of an art or music or other media. How is the video related or similar to other stories? So that's integration of knowledge and ideas. So that makes the student synthesize Okay, the information or the detail from the story, from the text being studied, to the different parallel texts. Okay? So that's for integration of knowledge and ideas. And of course, there are different cues after a text-dependent question that can guide our students okay, while reading. So the teachers can say, as you read, remember to use textual evidence to support your ideas. Remember to use words and phrases from the text to prove your answer. Be sure to include specific evidence from the text to support your ideas. Be sure to include specific words and phrases from the text to support your opinion. Inferences should be supported by the text. What in the text helped you to know? And what words and phrases did the author use that led you to your answer? If we want our students, or if we, if we, if we as teachers 
we can formulate text-dependent questions. And we can also ask our students to formulate text-dependent questions on their own. We should also guide them on how to formulate text-dependent responses. And these text-dependent responses are actually anchored on the different sentence stems that they have to use when they are providing the responses to the text-dependent questions. So their answers or their responses should start with, according to the text, okay, based on the story, according to par sentence one, paragraph three of the text, okay, because, for instance, for example, from reading the text, I know that in the text, now I know the author stated this proves, this shows, Something like that. Okay, so these are text-dependent responses. So we should also guide our students. No, we should not just allow them to answer the questions in incomplete sentences. So their answers, their responses should start with the sentence stems of the text-dependent responses. Okay. All right. So we're done with text-dependent questions, text-dependent responses, and providing one or two sentence summary. Another strategy that we need to teach our students is text annotation. So what is this text annotation all about? So one of the most important skills we can teach our learners as we begin to work on close reading is how to annotate text. Teaching annotation strategies will help them keep track of key ideas while reading. So how is it done? So our students should have a copy of the text. They need to mark up a text to indicate places of importance or something they don't understand. So they can annotate. Okay? They can make use of ball pen or pencil or highlighter. Okay? They can circle a word, okay? essential ideas or details. They can underline a phrase that is significant in the story or in, in the text. And they can also highlight a sentence. Text annotation also includes writing notes in the margin. These notes might be thoughts or questions about the text. So if there are things that are not clear for them, they can write it down in the margin of the text. This process of annotating helps the reader keep track of ideas and questions and supports deeper understanding of the text. So this is an example of a text with text annotation. Okay? So there are marginal notes. There are encircled words that are essential in the understanding or comprehending of the text. Now, in doing so, we have to be guided with the different symbols, okay, for closed reading. So, we can underline specific key details or events in the text. Our students can also make use of highlighter. Okay? Now, if they can figure out the main idea in the text, they can put star in the margin. So, that's already a signal that that particular statement is the main idea in the selection. They can also provide one, two, three to mark the order of events in a sequence. They can also encircle the word if they can identify important or keywords or phrases. Okay? Question mark will be uh, noted, okay, will be provided in the margins or in the word if there are still questions or if the word is something that is not unfamiliar to them. Okay? Ah, hindi ako, di familiar sa akin to. I have to put question mark. I have to unlock this meaning. Now, if there's something interesting Okay? Or parang aha moment siya. Okay? It's a word. It's a discovery. Okay? It's something that is interesting for the students or for the readers. They can put exclamation point. Okay? I actually did a text annotation making use of this selection or passage about food chains. And while reading, I made some marginal notes and I also encircled some of the words for me to be able to understand the text. Okay? I can I also put some questions, okay? Another strategy that we have to is text structure. So awareness of organizational patterns in informational text. So this can be achieved through diagrams, charts and outlining. So what are the different text structure that we can make use of? Ayan. So when we want to teach our students the text structure or the organization of text, we can ask them to pick out information or details and organize it using the different graphic organizers. So for description, they can make use of semantic map or concept map. For sequence, it can be a uh, flow chart. For cause and effect, this one. For problem solution and for comparison and contrast. Okay? In that way, the students will pick out information and organize the information through graphic organizer. All right? 
So effective close reading teaches learners to self-monitor their understanding by asking themselves four questions while repeatedly reading text. What is the author telling me? Are there any difficult, important vocabulary words? What does the author want me to understand? And how does the author play with language and meaning? Also crucial is that we should not only teach our students different literary texts, different stories. We should also present to them the different informational texts because these are the kinds of texts that they will encounter, okay? outside school, they will be confronted with a lot of informational text, much more complex than the literary text, okay? So they also get to know, um, they should also um, read informational texts such as biographies, autobiographies, books about history, social studies and the arts, technical texts, and digital sources on a range of topics. So, the strategies for noting significant details that you learned in this session are the following. First, analyzing types of details. Let us not focus only on asking our students to identify the explicit details, but also the implicit details. Also, you learn about formulating or asking text-dependent questions and providing text-dependent responses. Okay? You also learn about story map for narrative text that will allow you to what? note details from the stories and to note elements of the stories using story map. For informational text, you learn about text structure, okay, and organize this text structure into graphic organizers, okay? You also learn about close reading, wherein you as readers, you act like investigators of meaning. You act like detectives, okay? And of course, you learn about text annotation, okay? And I hope that you learn so much in this session. So in summary, we have to bear in mind that reading comprehension is important because it is the very reason for reading. Reading comprehension should be purpose purposeful and active. Noting significant details from the text is a critical skill for reading comprehension. As I've said, it's the mother of all reading comprehension skills. Reading comprehension can be developed by explicitly teaching comprehension strategies. And of course, the goal of literacy instruction is to create independent readers. My fellow educators, let us not just let our students alone in the quest for literacy. Let us all work together, help one another for us to be able to increase the literacy, ra literacy rate of our nation. And to end this session, let me, end, let me provide you these words from yours truly. Increasing the literacy rate among children is everyone's concern, not only in the school, but also at home and ultimately in the community. This can be done not only by explicitly teaching children various literacy skills to make them active, proficient, and independent readers, but also by nurturing a culture of reading among us. Teachers and education leaders who are accountable for the education of young children should also serve as their reading models. Just like any activity that particular adult performs, the child responds with a desire to do it as well. Researchers demonstrated that when a teacher or an adult models reading for the learners, their on task reading naturally increases. So let us not teach only our students how to read, but we should also model reading for them. We should also be models of reading for our students, and they should see us also that we are reading in our respective stations, be it in school, be it in office, and be it in community. Ladies and gentlemen, you have heard Sir Denmark Alayon. Let us now answer the questions, the previewing questions we have posted a while ago. So number one, what is a significant detail? A detail is a part of a whole. It may also refer to small elements that collectively constitute a work. Details in a text may be significant because they contribute to the wholeness of the material. Others considered insignificant may be there, but removing them may not affect significantly the integrity of the text. What is noting significant details? This is a reading comprehension skill that involves picking out from a text the particular piece or pieces of information or details to achieve a given purpose. These details are ones that good readers notice and others use to emphasize the elements of the literary text or key information of the informational text. What does research say about effect 
effective literacy instruction. In the junior grade, students' inquiry and reasoning processes continue to develop as teacher's guide and instruct students towards increasingly higher levels of comprehension by modeling and scaffolding instruction in ways that help students explore the texts they read to discover ever more subtle and complex meanings. And what is close reading? Close reading represents one type of reading in which students have a go to a text or at a text, becoming the primary investigator of its meaning. They love it all 2013. So what are the strategies for noting details? Our speaker have mentioned the following to it. Analyzing types of details, formulating, asking text-dependent questions, providing text-dependent responses, story map for narrative texts, text structure for informational texts, graphic organizers, close reading, and text annotation. We will now come up with the following wrap-up questions for reflection. First, question. Now that we are in a new normal and we are expected to use different learning modalities, how will you teach explicitly noting significant details to your learners? Next is discuss other strategies and share best practices and possible challenges you might encounter as you teach this particular comprehension skill. This will be your task to be submitted to an assigned team. Thank you so much and God bless everyone. Welcome to CLMD Welcome Connect. To CLMD in Connect. support to the in comprehensive to the region led learning and continuity, continuity plan, continuity LCP. plan LCP. I teach. I teach. Integrating technology, Integrating academic, technology community, academic community, the household, the household. Ensuring every learner is safe and protected, protected anytime, protected anywhere. anywhere, anywhere. Anchored on Sulung Edokalida. This is Dep Ed this Regional Dep Office Ed 11, Office delivering 11. quality delivering education quality across Devo region. region. Welcome to CLMD Connect, in support to the Comprehensive Region-Led Learning Continuity Plan LCP. I teach, integrating technology academic community, the household, ensuring every learner is safe and protected anytime, anywhere. Anchored on Sulung Edokalidad. This is Dep Ed Regional Office 11, delivering quality education across Davao region. Thank you so much to our reading coordinator from the Division of Davao City, Madam Narmela P. Espedido. Indeed, reading ability has always been this critical to our academic endeavors, and today on this training literacy instruction, it has recognized its importance in the interventions in the reading program to our struggling readers in our respective schools. We were in awe once again on our resource facilitator gave her presentation this morning on hunting for the nitty gritty, noting the significant details and textual evidences through close reading. She maintained the context and the value of the advocacy of Bawat Bata Bumabasa. Thank you so much, Madam Narmela Escadigo, our reading coordinator from the Division of Davao City. Right there, Ms. Marge. Yes, Ms. Ava, I could not agree more. At this juncture, we would like to acknowledge and give due recognition to our watch advocates 
for our early birds for the past two days. We have prepared a surprise video for you, so please watch it. Welcome to CLMD Connect. In support to the Comprehensive Region-Led Learning Continuity Plan LCP. I teach, I teach. Integrating, integrating technology, technology academic, academic community, community, the household, the household. Ensuring, ensuring every, every learner, learner is safe and protected anytime, protected anywhere. anywhere. Anchored on Anchored Sulan Edopolida. This is DepEd this is Regional, Ed Regional Office, Office 11, 11, delivering, delivering quality, quality education, education across Devo region. Devo region.
Welcome to CLMD Connect. In support to the Comprehensive Region-Led Learning Continuity Plan LCP. I teach. Integrating technology academic community. The household. Ensuring every learner is safe and protected anytime, anywhere. Anchored on Sulung Edokalidad. This is DepEd Regional Office 11, delivering quality education across Davao region. Thank you so 
much, Watch Advocates, and thank you, Ma'am Chris Carmel Kingno of Bernardo Carpio National High School for preparing the videos. We are constantly monitoring your attendance, so please complete and provide all details asked in the form. Okay, so for this afternoon's breakaway session, the new link is posted below. Okay, the one that's running below your screen, that's the new link for our breakaway session this afternoon. Don't worry because the link will also be posted on the Facebook page of CLMD. So please do check out the Facebook page of CLMD. All right, I think that's it for this morning. Ms. Ava, any final yes. words before we end the live stream? Yes, thank you so yes. much, Miss Marge. And we will not forget to congratulate because this is really a well attended for the watch advocates from the K to 12 and to the ALS. And we also have the SPED and, of course, our school heads, our apps, and our PSDS. This is really a congratulatory work for our watch advocates. This is DepEd, of course, we advocate consciousness and honesty and thank you so much for that one must march of course at this time we are really very glad and we all will uh, have one speaker for today and that is madam normella p espirido of our reading coordinator in our city division of davao city who shared highlights on the hunting the nitty-gritty noting the significant details and textual evidences through close reading and that is our a breakaway session significant lessons learned and that is definitely one of the best increasing literacy rate is everyone's concern miss marge by nurturing a culture of reading among us this is our pursuit of greater excellence in education as i'm saying one davao region bawat bata bumabasa sulu ito kalidad saying to god be the highest glory Okay, thank you so much for that, Miss Ava. And before we officially end our live stream, I would like to take this opportunity to say, Mom is CWB of HRDB, Deputy Region 11, for allowing me to stay in your office, Mom. Maraming maraming salamat po. All right, so we will be back at 1 p.m. and we hope that you will still join us. For now, I am officially ending this live stream in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. See you again later. Welcome to CLMD Connect in support to the Comprehensive <gasps> Region-Led Learning Continuity Plan LCP. I teach, integrating technology academic community, the household, ensuring every learner is safe and protected anytime, anywhere. Anchored on Sulung Edokalidad. This is DepEd Regional Office 11, delivering quality education across Davao Region.